last Thursday at Ben's house, we uh, began a study on, I guess it would be this, the subject of sanctification, but we did that, we're going to do that specifically by going verse by verse through Hebrews chapter 12, and I just wanted to give a quick, um, I don't know, six, seven minute overview of what actually took about an hour on Thursday night, but um, we kind of looked at, compared and contrasted the uh, Paul's letter to the Romans and uh, whomever wrote the letter to the Hebrews, I believe to be Paul, but um, they're very similar in a lot of ways and then especially uh, Hebrews 12.1 and Romans 12.1. Uh, we focused on how those two verses are similar to each other. And if I can just kind of boil that down and, and, and give you a video of that really quickly. In, in Hebrews, ultimately the first 11 chapters of Hebrews are about Christology. And by Christology, I just mean the, the study of Christ, who the person of Christ is. And in Hebrews, we just it's just sort of like a, a manifesto, a, um, uh, a Mount Everest, if you will, about the subject of Christ. And we learn that he is like the angels, but greater than the angels. And then we learn that he is like Moses, but greater than Moses. And, and we learn that he is, he, uh, he's a priest like Aaron, only greater. And, and, and then we learn that, that um, he's like Melchizedek, that uh, his priesthood had no, no beginning and no end. Um, and, and we just learn that uh, he is like the great high priest. And, uh, but then we learn that he, he's also the, the lamb that has been slain. So he's both, he's both priest making the offering and, and sacrifice being the offering. And he's offering this all to God. And, and, um, there's just so many, um, climactic passages. The, uh, the one about how he's to save us to the uttermost, um, or over in Hebrews 10, 19, I believe it is, where we can come boldly before the throne of grace. And there's just these fantastic passages in the book of Hebrews. And then in chapter 11, we get into what is uh, commonly called the Hall of Faith. And, and we have these quick, rapid-fire statements that, you know, by faith Abel did this, and by faith Noah did that, and by faith uh, Abraham, and by faith Sarah, and by faith Moses, and... and um, and it's just this this quick synopsis of the Old Testament and all the heroes of faith and and, and everything that everything that uh, Christ did for them in them and through them and um, and then it all kind of comes to a head there at the end of chapter 11 and and over in uh, over in Romans we sort of have the same thing it's it's a manifesto it's a it's a Mount Everest it's it's uh, but it's on the subject of soteriology the um, the study of salvation it's it's um, what does it mean to be justified? And in Romans, we have you know, in, in th it, Paul spends three whole chapters just showing us that there's nobody righteous, that that nobody seeks God, that we're that we're all lost, and uh, and and then he speaks about um, about how we can't save ourselves. But then in, in chapter five, he turns the attention to, but God in Christ has saved us. You know, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly, and and then he goes on to talk about. Um, sanctification, how he, he didn't, in chapter 6, he, he didn't just save us um, judicially and, and past tense and then just sort of leave us to figure it out on our own. No, he's day by day s saving us. And, and in chapter 8, we learn that he's conforming us to the image of his son. And it's, it's just this huge manifesto on the subject of salvation. And then, um, and then in chapter 12 uh, of, of Romans and in chapter 12 of Hebrews, um, the, gr the grammar actually changes. Up to that point, we've had what's called um, doctrinal indicatives, and these are like um, statements of fact. It's, it's, it's like me just saying this is true, this is what is, and then in chapter 12, the grammar actually switches and, and we go to commands, and so it, and that's why both of them start out with the word therefore. Paul, Paul loves the word therefore, one of the reasons why I think he wrote Hebrews, but but therefore, when you read Paul saying that, he's, what he's saying is, is um, you know, at this point, if, if you've grasped everything that I've been talking about, if you've really wrapped your mind around everything and you understand it, this is the obvious conclusion. And that's what, that's what Hebrews 12.1 and Romans 12.1 are. And uh, Romans 12.1 is, you know, therefore, in, in view of God's mercies, if you understand how merciful it is for God to have saved us, 
Um, I, I, I beseech you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, right? And then it says, um, this is your reasonable service. Uh, some translations you'll read the word reasonable. There's a, a funny exegetical thing I don't have time to talk about right now, but he, he's saying that the only logical thing for you to do is, is, to, is to give God your body as a, as a living sacrifice and, and say, here I am. Do what you want with me. And then um, over in Hebrews 12.1 we have, you know, therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, um, great a cloud of witnesses, what's he talking about? Um, he's talking about the, the, the chapter 11, what he just finished, what, you know, what he just finished writing about. Since we have um, Abel witnessing to us that there is a, a way that we can come before God, since we have Noah witnessing to us that, that, that God is faithful um, and he does not leave us or forsake us, since we have Moses witnessing to us that it's, that it's, it's worth it not to, uh, not to indulge in those sins that have uh, you know, a passing pleasure for a certain period of time, it's, it's, it's worth it to bear the, reproach, the reproaches of Christ. Um, Abraham is testifying to us, witnessing to us that that um, when God asks you to do something like to to do something drastic, to leave the place that you know and just and just go and just follow Him, it's worth it. It's worth it every time, and and that's what that's sort of what all of them are echoing. It's worth it. And since we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses telling us it's worth it, the only thing that makes any sense for us to do is to throw off the sins that so easily entangle us. Right? How can you? How can we just sort of like nonchalantly keep right on doing the very things that nailed our Savior to the cross? Especially if you understand who he is, which is what you know Hebrews, Hebrews 1 through 11 was all about. And so um, I encourage you this week just to, just to jump into uh, to Romans 12.1 and Hebrews 12.1. Get two different Bibles if you can and just have them right next to each other or, or a finger in each and, and just go back and forth and compare the two because grammatically they're so similar and um, one of them is the responses to, to Christ and who he is and one of them is the responses to salvation and what he's done um, so that it's uh, there's a lot of profit in reading those two uh, together at the same time but uh, I hope this uh, hope this is in encourages you and uh, maybe even excites you this excites me I just love this stuff and um, have a good Sunday. Good morning, everybody.